name is Colette Mazzuccelli. In the Classical Theories and Contemporary Issues in International Relations online seminar, taught by me for Long Island University Global since 2015, it is our responsibility in service to transnational civil society during this unprecedented time of COVID-19 to listen to non-governmental organizations, notably the Syrian Emergency Task Force, which accomplishes political, economic, and legal work to raise awareness about the most pressing, critical humanitarian issue of this early 21st century. We appreciate the occasion to launch this podcast series, Global Connections, Syrian Hidden Voices, to discuss the ways in which the Syrian Emergency Task Force is engaging across countries to bring hope, hope to the orphans, the displaced, the women, the detainees in Syria. Our learning, research, and service aim to make a difference in a fragile world impacted increasingly by the novel coronavirus pandemic, which exacerbates underdevelopment and violence as personal freedom and human rights are consistently violated. It is our hope that the peoples of Syria may one day be able to live in peace together in the country they love. As we study international relations, we take responsibility in our learning to link concepts and practice in the vision of world education articulated by Morris Mitchell and elaborated by his colleagues in Friends World College during the 1960s to this day. In this podcast series, we remain faithful to Mitchell's vision as the legacy of Friends World College lives on in the lives of our LIU Global alumni. Thank you, Muaz, for joining this podcast today. We look forward to our evolving cooperation with the Syrian Emergency Task Force in this Global Connections Syrian Hidden Voices podcast series. back to another episode of Global Connections Syrian Hidden Voices. I'm your host, Olivia Stevens, and today we are meeting with Rasha, who discusses her role at the Women's Dawn Center located in Syria. We also hear about the importance of women's empowerment in a country where women are oftentimes seen as second-class citizens. Follow along to hear her story and how the Women's Dawn Center is empowering women to learn new skills and support one another in a country that has been facing violence for almost 10 years. السلام عليكم انا رشا مديرة مركز اشراق الغد لتمكين المرأة من ثلاث سنين معي ماجستير عربي حاليا مدير المركز وبشتغل كمان بمجال اشراف على التعليم um, hello, all. My name is Rasha. Um, I am the executive director of Tomorrow's Dawn Women Empowerment Center. I've been doing that for the past three years. I have a master's in Arabic literature, uh, and I also uh, uh, oversee all of the vocational training and all of the teaching and education um, that goes on at the center. So thank you for having me. Didn't was to ask. Rasha to explain who she is and what her mission is. So if she could dive into the, if Rasha could dive into the mission of what her organization is about and how it got started, that would be fantastic. Tamam. Tabaan, ana mitle mitle ni kthir min nisa Suriyat. Itajjert akter min marra bisabab luwada. بعد ما بدأت الثورة. واحدة أنا واحدة من النساء السوريات أو مرأة سوري تهجرت مثل كتير ناس بعد ما بدأت الثورة كنت معيدة بالجامعة فاضطريت أن أترك وجيت لبلدي بإدلب رجعت اضطريت طبعا أتهجر منه مرة تانية هاي كبداية يعني I, a Syrian woman, like so many Syrian women, have been displaced by the the war. Be, before the beginning of the revolution, I was an assistant professor at a university. I was uh, also doing my education. Uh, and then, uh, you know, with 
what the Assad regime did. We were all forced out of, of our homes. But but my story is one of, of many millions like me. ناس فقدت كثير فقدت معيل فكانت صارت مضطرة أصلاً إنه هي تستلم عائلة تساعد عائلة تشرف عليها. So since the beginning and throughout the violence being perpetrated against Syrians and in terms of the work of Tomorrow's Dawn Women's Center, the goal of Tomorrow's Dawn Women's Center is to cater to and to help and support the many women that have been stopped from getting their education. that have lost their their loved ones many have lost their husbands and and or anyone that was the bread maker or the provider for the family so they've become the sole source of support so these uh, many so these women that have been victims uh, of this violence are our beneficiaries and that is what the center's uh, goal is and uh, what we would lo- what we aim to achieve is it's just to support them tamam taban al markaz مثل كثير مراكز هو صوره من صور الحياه المدنيه بسوريا هدفنا بهيك مراكز نبين انه نحن مو بس ناس عم على القتل والحرب مثل ما عم لنا النظام رغم انه نحن صح طالبنا بالحريه ونحن قمنا بثوره بس نحن دائما بنحب نكمل التعليم بنحب نشوف النساء عم بيرجعوا بيشتغلوا عم يتعلموا سواء بالجانب المهني او التعليمي او التثقيفي بالعكس الحمد لله خلال الثورة كثير صار عندنا تثقيف الفتيات كان يمكن كثير غايب عنهم الفتيات والشباب بنفس الشيء يعني فكانت هاي المراكز بس so, تبين انه نحن تمام انه نحن مو هواة حرب You know our center like many other women's centers are part of the fabric of civil society in Syria and it also proves the regime wrong that we're not just people that that want war or or are just there to you know uh, oppose them yeah it's true we asked for our freedom and for our liberty we went out in revolution because we want our rights but our life doesn't just revolve around the war in syria we have and we want to empower um women and even young men as well and we have learned so much in the time that we've garnered at least some freedom from the assad regime where We have seen women's centers and we have seen civil society organizations really flourish when there's even a little bit of room um, of free expression and pursuing um, knowledge uh, and bettering our lives. And so really our women's center, you know, should show the world that the Syrian people are more than just war. Thank you so much, Muaz, and thank you, Rasha, for that response. Um, so, Rasha, how did you become involved in your present work, and what does a day in your life look like at the Women's Dawn Center? تمام. طبعا كيف بدأت أنا من بداية الثورة تقريبا أو مو البداية البداية ب 2012 أجيت على ضيعتي شفت كثير ناس فقدت معيلة نساء بحاجة لمساعدة فكانت دائما تخطر ببالي فكرة إنه أنا لازم أشتغل شيء كونه كان عدد أصلا الدارسين أو المتخرجات بتضيع قلال ففي أنا وبنت عمي وكم صبي تاني بعدها اشتغلت على ملف للإخفاء القسري التقيت بكثير من النساء اللي فقدوا معيلون أزواجهم مفقودين مخطوفين أو معتقلين أو مقتولين فكثير خطر ببالي قصة المركز النسائي وطلعت أحضر تدريب بتركيا بال2017 طلعت تهريب رحلة شاقة وصدفة انه التقيت فيكم وقت اقترحت فكرة المركز النسائي والحمد لله تمت بعدين. I had been an assistant teacher, an assistant professor. I had capabilities, things I wanted to give back. I became displaced and many others had become displaced. The war had made so many widows um, and the war has also had also robbed so many people of their chance at completing or even beginning their education. Also, the arbitrary detentions by the Assad regime that have taken so many people and have taken away the the breadwinners many times and those that provided for their families. And I noticed that women, you know, are taking an oversized role to try to keep society together and that there was a huge need to support them. And then I came out in 2017, just crossing just over the border uh, with Turkey, Turkey. And at that time, I met 
representatives of the Syrian Emergency Task Force, where I presented the idea and the importance, the necessity of a women's center. And thankfully, from that, that point, uh, that was the beginning uh, of tomorrow's Dawn Women's Center and my role there. Uh, يوم صراحة والافتتاح يعني وحضور الناس وكانت كثير الناس مبسوطة إنه صار عنا مركز بمنطقتنا يوم تاني ممكن نحكي عن أيام اللي كنا عم نخرج فيها دفعات للمتدربات خاصة وقت شفت متدربة مثلا ما عندها حدا يساعد أهلها هي تحولت لمنتجة منهم فتحوا صالونات خبرتك قبل صالونات حلاقة نسائي منهم توظفوا بمشافة كثير من النساء اللي ما كانوا بيعرفوا يضربوا الإبرة يتحولوا لممرضات واشتغلوا بالفترة الأولى بمشافة فكان هذا صراحة إنجاز كبير وفي كمان يوم أكثر إذا بحسن نحكي خليني ترجم اللي قلتي وبعدين نسمع تمام. اليوم الثالث ممتاز تمام. كلامك um, So to give you an idea of you know some days of my work there I mean the first example that comes to mind is the first day the first day that after working um, with SCTF, uh, we were able to prepare and, and have the grand opening of tomorrow's Don Women's Center. I remember that day was so full of joy. The entire community came, our entire town. Uh, they were so happy that for the first time they have this women's center that's really gonna help in so many ways. And so that's a day that, that I'll never forget. I would also like to mention the fact that um, the biggest joy um, that I get going to work is when we see our, our many success stories. For example, during we, we did, um, there was one uh, individual, one lady, a uh, young lady whose family was very poor uh, and they were displaced uh, and it was very tough. And she was one of the trainees um, you know, uh, at our course, of, at our women's center, which of course provides free training to everyone. Um, but she became someone who is now not only able to sustain herself, but, but someone who's helping the economy. She opened, she did, a, she took a training course in cosmetology alongside others and multiple young ladies from that trained in the women's center opened their own salons sustaining themselves and helping the economy and supporting others, uh, which has been really wonderful to see. And the same can be said of the graduates of our nursing course that were able to get jobs um, at clinics uh, and in, in hospitals around Idlib um, after getting trained with us. Um, and there's also another day um, that I wanted to tell you about. Tadari uh, طبعا كمان من الانجازات او من الامور كثير بحسها كانت مهمه الدورات التعليميه اللي كنا عم نقدمها يعني بذكر اخر دوره قدمناها استلمنا طلاب كانوا صراحه مستواهم كثير ضعيف فيوم اللي تخرجوا الطلاب من البكالوريا وطلعت نتائج البكالوريا يمكن ما ضل طالب الا اتصل وعم يشكرني وعم يشكر المركز طلع عنا ما شاء الله وقتها شيء اربعه طب وصيدليين تالين هندسات في كثير كثير طلاب استفادوا وبتذكر خلال هاي الدوره مره كان في سبع طيارات مروحين عم بتحلق فوق ضيعتنا بس الطلاب قالوا له انه لا كملي الدرس خلينا عم ناخذ درس لانه كانوا صراحه حاسين انه هو المركز يعني المكان الوحيد اللي حاسين انه فعلا عم يستفادوا فيه. One day too that, that I'll always um, remember is we were we were doing these courses, these academic courses for high school students that have not had the resources or the ability to, to really, you know, be up to par and to be able to graduate high school. And so we, we supported them with these academic courses and we saw a huge, um, you know, just improvement. Uh, and I remember later on, we had so many students call as soon as the, the final results for, you know, the high school seniors came out where, where they were just thanking us from the bottom of their hearts that we had saved, uh, saved them and had, you know, they would have failed otherwise and they were able to get their high school diplomas because of the academic training and courses that we provided them. But I also remember that that day when we were doing those academic trainings and that day when we were doing that course, we had seven helicopters flying overhead at the same time. These seven helicopters that were coming like a conveyor belt were the same ones that dropped barrel bombs on the town. 
And I remember saying, okay, well, maybe we can, you know, all go and take cover. But the students at that point said, no, keep teaching us. Um, and so we were able to continue to, to finish the course under those circumstances, because the fact is that they felt that this was the only place where they were getting hope and where they were bettering their lives and the lives of their communities, despite the circumstances. Was the center impacted by the recent airstrikes in Syria? لا لا اكيد ما كان في اي تاثير من القصف الامريكي لانه احنا ما كنا بمناطق فيها الايرانيين اصلا الضرر الوحيد اللي تعرض له المركز كان بقصف قوات النظام بال2018 انقصف بالقرب من المركز وخلال النزوح انسرق انسرقت اغراض المركز ورجعنا جينا بالقصف الثاني بالبدايه نهايه 2019 كمان تعرض المكان الثاني للقصف مجددا اما قصف القوات الامريكي لا no, the airstrikes by the United States against Iranian-backed militias did ha- had zero effect on us. Um, and they were not near any civilian areas, uh, those Iranian-backed militias. The, the airstrikes that have affected us are those of the Assad regime and Russia uh, and the shelling by Iranian-backed groups. Um, in 2018, the Assad regime uh, used a barrel bomb um, that dealt great damage to the center, we all had to actually run away and uh, the the center was also looted. We returned and re-established in a new place in the same town. And then again in 2019, um, our center was once again targeted by aerial strikes by the Assad regime. Rasha, what does women's empowerment mean to you as a Syrian woman? Um, could you possibly give some examples of women's empowerment? Hello. طبعا تمكين المراه تحديدا بمجتمعنا له اكثر من معنى الهدف الاول نحن نحوله من مستهلك الى منتج سواء على مستوى الانتاج المادي او حتى الانتاج المعنوي يعني انت وقت تزودي اي امراه ما عندها اي علم كيف تهتم بابنها الصغير ببيتها بمعلومات اساسي بارتفاع حراره الطفل انخفضت حرارته صار معه اشكال كيف تتعامل معه هاي كثير مفيده بنحكي أه بالتمكين المهني اللي ممكن في مهن تعلموها النساء حولتهم لمنتجات مثل انتاج الصوف يعني اللي عم تشتغل صوف ممكن تشتغله وتبيع تصرف على عيله ونفس الشيء اللي تتعلم الحلاقه النسائيه والتجميل او التمريض أه بالمجال التعليمي كمان نفس الشيء نحن كنا عم نساعد الطالبات لحتى يدخلوا بعدها على الجامعه مثلا فهذا تمكين التمكين كمان من ناحية ثانية إنه ثواني بس سامحيني بس ما أنسى so when I think of women empowerment um, for me um, and for the women in Syria um, I think about changing you know how uh, ensuring that women uh, uh, and the women that we work with go from being consumers to producers uh, and not just you know in, in different ways uh, whether it comes to sort of materially or in terms of uh, other ways that they are um, they're sort of supporting their their own communities and so for example uh, one example is even you know empowering a woman who for example maybe has a child at home uh, and stuff how to deal with certain symptoms and and having you know for example a, a elevated temperature or other things uh, that you know medical things that you know that they could learn to help in their home life at the same time empowering them as well to be able to provide for their families and for their communities uh, through vocational training, through their ability. So for example, we had uh, wool uh, workshops and you know when you sew something together and, and everything and you have the materials and, and you have the knowledge to do so, then you're able to sell that. You're able to provide for your family, you're able to provide uh, for your community and for yourself. Uh, and be a positive impact on the overall local economy. Um, the same applies academically as well. Uh, you know, being able to to have the right knowledge, being able to have the degrees, or and so on, that can help you be um, a more productive member of society. تفضلي أختي سامحيني. لا الله يعطيك العافية بالعكس تمام الموضوع الثاني بالتمكين هو إنه أصلاً تعطي النساء هاي المكاني يعرفوا إنه هن عندهم قدرات كيف ممكن يطالعوا هاي القدرات يواجهوا المجتمع اللي كانت بكتير من الأحيان خاصة ببيئة الأرياف أكثر من المدن يعني 
آه انه المراه تصنيف ثاني بعد الرجل انه هي شغله بس بالبيت ومو قادره اصلا مو قادره تقدم شيء هذا طبعا كنت شوفه كثير مع النساء بنهايه الدورات او خلال العمل يعني وقت وحده تشوف قطعه تاع لعبه تشتغل بعد ما تم الجزاء كثير تنبسط انه انا اشتغلت هيك وبعدين تصير تفرجي هذا الشيء للعالم اللي بتعرفه انه كثير تكون مبسوطه على حالها انا اشتغلت انا انتجت انا صرت اعرف مجرد انه هي yeah, and... تمام. تمام فهذا كثير كان ممتاز Another thing that's important aspect of what women's empowerment means to me uh, and to the work of the center is that We know um, how amazing Syrian women are. And the fact is that they have amazing abilities and talents and, and they, they are powerful. Uh, and so showing them that and, and training them and highlighting that they're able to be key productive members of society is really important. In addition, um, historically uh, and specifically in the countryside in the rural areas of Syria, less so in the cities. Um, women are seen as second-class citizens many times, that they belong only at home and they're unable to provide, they're unable to learn or, or be productive members of society. They just need to, you know, take care of the house and not do anything. And uh, and this is uh, a mentality that that is wrong uh, and needs to change. And so it's been so wonderful to see how we've worked Uh, with women even here in rural communities um, in a way where we've empowered them and showed them and showed the entire society um, that that they are an integral uh, part of uh, being able to sustain and support and, and uh, be the spinal cord really of, of Syrian society on the ground. And I've seen so many of our graduates and, and so many of the people that have taken workshops with us Um, you know, these young ladies being so proud of their work, you know, if they sewed, for example, um, uh, sweaters and learned how to do that, they, they're showing it off and saying, look, I did that and I'm able to provide and I can sell that. And, and, and so to increase their confidence uh, and show them that, you know, they can be powerful, productive, talented Um, amazing people. Um, that to me is is women's empowerment. In the present time, in the present time, there is another thing that we have to share with each other to offer courses for women to us. Because in the area we are living, there are a lot of women who have women who don't even know how to read or write. So we can work on this field. We can, as we talked about before, we can do courses in the English language that we have talked about in partnership. دورات مم. بالكمبيوتر كثير عم تنطلب منا طبعا بنتمنى انه تتوفر عنا هيك دورات بس ان شاء الله اكيد تدريب فيزيائي تمام الله يعطيك العافيه يا رب هذا هذا المجمل today uh, you know we're looking at you know how do we expand our work and how do we benefit um, you know Syrians displaced even more and so for example we're in discussions and partnering up um with another organization as well to try to erase illiteracy from syrian women in northwest syria and, and especially in these camps and with the circumstances we've had a lot of women that don't know how to read and write and we want to try to make that non-existent and work on that in addition we're really sort of looking and we've had discussions um with sctf to see how we could work with academic institutions in the United States uh, and with American communities uh, for further courses in English at different levels. Uh, we would love to have a computer course. It's something that has been asked uh, from us uh, a lot. And so we're really hopeful that we're able to, you know, raise the funds and, and be able to have the capacity to, to provide this much needed help in partnership with American communities. Fantastic. And Rasha, what hopes do you have for the future of the Women's Center? تمام نحن دائما بنفكر انه طالما في نساء محتاجه تتعلم حتى عملنا صراحه مو مختصر بس عن النساء بس خلينا نركز اكثر عليهم طالما في نساء محتاجين يتعلموا محتاجين نعطيهم هاي قوه الشخصيه اللي هن موجود يقدر مو عارفين يطلعوها فنحن لازم نشتغل حتى لو وصلنا لمرحله التطوع اكيد بنشتغل يعني ان شاء الله لانه هذا واجب يعني انا كفتاه دارسي في نساء غيري اكيد ما لازم نقصر الهدف انه اكبر عدد ممكن نحن ناثر فيه ونغيره نشتغل هذا الشغل لانه اكيد رب العالمين بالنهايه بده يحاسبنا يعني انه شو اشتغلنا باللي بنعرفه بقدراتنا نحن كيف استغلناها فنحن وقت عم نستغلها بتطوير نساء 
You know, when it comes to the future work of the Women's Center, you know, we are committed to continue to work as long as there are um, women that are in need uh, of these skills and this education and this support system. And by the way, our work isn't only with women. I know, um, you know, that's the, the focus, but we also cater to, to men and youth um, that need this sort of support. Um, but really, as long as there are women um, in need of this vital support, because they are the key to supporting their communities and, and they've been incredibly resilient, it is uh, my responsibility as an educated young lady, for example, to, to help. Um, and even as far as our Women's Center is concerned, even if we all, as the staff of the Women's Center, have to uh, work on a volunteer basis, we were we will, um, regardless of, you know, the ability to have, like, sustained support, because uh, this is really an obligation for all of us. Um, at the end of the day, God will uh, judge us based on what we did with the skills that we have and what we've learned. And like I said, as um, a, an educated young lady, that is my obligation to, to teach others. And that's what we all should aim for in life, to, to give back uh, to our communities. Um, so that's what I hope for our future, is that we continue to help as long as there's a need. And do women have a special role as teachers in Syrian society? تمام طبعا مو بس كمعلمات يعني هذا كنت بدي اكمل انا هاي الفكره ليش انه نحن مصرين نعلم النساء لانه نحن بهي المرحله بتوقع انه اكثر حدا ممكن يغير فعلا هو المراه لانه هي اللي عم تربي الجيل هي اللي عم تكون مع الرجل هي اللي عم تكون مع الاولاد اللي بتن بعد فتره هن يكونوا مسؤولين عن هالبلد فهي اذا ما كان عندها هاي الثقافه كيف بدها تغير هاي هذا الاساس اما كمعلمه مو بس بمجال التعليم ممكن المراه حتى ضمن بيتها اذا ما بتشتغل اي شغله بس على الاقل تغير شوي من عقليتها تعرف كيف تتعامل مع الاولاد بالبيت تعرف كيف تحسب حياتها بشكل صحيح كيف تكون مؤثره هذا لحاله جانب كثير مهم يعني نحن بكثير دورات حتى خلال الدورات المهنيه بندخل هيك بنقاشات بنحكي قصص كثير مهمة إنه أنا كيف ممكن أتدبر الوضع كيف ممكن أتفهم إنه هذا الشيء عم بصير معنا طبيعي لأنه بالنهاية أكيد يعني مثلا ما في ظلم بدوم نحكي قصص من السفر من تجارب بعض فتح الأفق عند المرأة كثير مهم. Women um, in Syrian society have a, a special role as teachers, but they are also well beyond uh, just the main teachers in, in society in Syria. They are the foundation for, for Syrian society, especially at these times that we're living in today. They've become everything. They've become the breadwinner, the teachers, the educators, the nurses, the people that um, you know help their children, their husbands, their loved ones uh, through some of the most difficult times um, that we've ever imagined. Um, and so um, I think that women have an incredibly important role in Syrian society uh, as teachers and well beyond. And there are so often, you know, at the Women's Center, we have really wonderful and deep discussions um uh you know with our with our beneficiaries and, and with everyone during the workshops about these times that we're living in how tough it is to live in a war but then trying to figure out how each of us are able to carry our families and communities through it um uh, what our abilities are how we need to deal with our children for example um to you know just help them live a semblance of normal life through all of this? How do we uh, sustain, you know, have safety and security for our loved ones, our communities? How do we sustain ourselves? And, and these conversations are really incredibly important. Um, they go along with exactly the work that we're doing at the Women's Center. And like I said, the Women's Center is for the entire community, not just for women, but, but we can see that for women especially, broadening their horizons and empowering them more is really key because they are the foundation of uh, a Syrian society living in a war zone. Thank you for that, Moaz and Rasha. And 
Um, my next question is, what role do you see women playing in civil society as the conflict in Syria continues? دور المرأة صراحة ما بيختلف عن دور الرجل بالعكس مثل ما قلت لك دورها يمكن أهم هي دائما داعمة داعمة للرجل إن كان زوج إن كان ابن ممكن تساعده بالتخطيط لحياته ممكن تساعده على التقبل الحياة على قسوة الحياة ممكن تكون مشاركة بالإنتاج بالظل ظروف اقتصادية صعبة كثير عم نمر فيها يعني كثير بيوت عم تساعد فيها المرأة مع الرجل بالإنتاج لازم تكون متعلمة ومثقفة تساعد أولادها كمان المدارس عندنا كثير وضع متردة فإذا ما كان في متابعة للأولاد بالبيوت مشكلة حقيقية يعني المدارس يا أما بيكون فيها مية طالب بالصف سبعين فالأعداد كثير وأساتذة عم يتركوا الأم اللي عم بتتابع أولادها بالبيت هذا الجهاد اللي عم تشتغل مع زوجة كمان كثير شيء عظيم اللي عم تربي أولادها على قيم صحيحة عم تتقبل مثلا فكرة إنه الزواج مبكر خطأ أو إنه التعليم أمر مهم هاي كلها قصص نحن دائما بنسعى لها أو بنحاول إنه ثبتة عند النساء عنا فدور المرأة ما بيختلف عن دور الرجل أبدا The role of women in this war is no different than the role of men I would argue it is even more important and the fact is the women, women's role um, through this war in society is to be a support system for her family, for her husband, for her kids, for her community. It's also to be a producer and someone who's able to help sustain um, their their family uh, because the economic situation is, is horrific. Um, and so, um, and also to be the educator as well for society because it is women um, that uh, are teaching and the school system and the educational system in Idlib has been decimated. The schools that do exist have over a hundred children per class. And if there isn't someone at home that's able to teach, then a generation would go without education. Uh, so women's role in the war is just as important as men, I would argue even more so. Um, they have to be the support system for their families, for their husbands, for their kids, for their community. They have to be uh, also the breadwinners and the producers in their community. They have to provide under especially horrific economic circumstances right now. Um, they also have to be the educators. They have to be, uh, the, you know, women are the teachers in Syrian society. Um, and the education system in Idlib province has been decimated. I mean, schools have like one class with over 100 students in it. And there isn't someone at home. You know, this is a generation that, that can go without an education. And so women's role in this war is really all of the main pillars of, of, of helping the society be resilient and continue to be resilient under these um, horrific circumstances and and women's role is no less in any way than, than any of the men uh, including those that are trying to defend against um, the Assad regime and its allies. So what message would you share with people all over the world about the Women's Dawn Center and its role in Syria? Uh, okay. الحرب ما ممكن تكسر إرادتنا تعرضنا لكثير أخطار قصف يعني شيء صراحة يمكن الكثير ناس ما مر عليها اللي مر علينا عشنا أيام كبيرة تحت رحمة الطيران والصواريخ وكل هذه الأمور من القصف ومن الأسلحة المتطورة اللي استخدمها نظام روسيا بس دائما نحن بنأكد إنه ما في شيء بيكسر إرادتنا الإنسان طالما إنه حي لازم دائما يشتغل يجتهد ليثبت نفسه ما ممكن تروح هاي الإرادة إلا بموتنا دائما نتمنى أن يكون العالم كله واقف مع قضيتنا لأنه هي قضية عادلة أكيد وجود هذه الناس عم تشتغل واللي عم تستمر بعملها رغم كل الظروف بحد ذاته دافع لحتى الناس توقف معنا صراحة so my we we at, the, at tomorrow's dawn women's center do carry a message to the world. Um, the fact is that we live under horrific circumstances. We have taught and we have, you know, been living under missiles, barrel bombs, 
all kinds of airstrikes, helicopters, airplanes, um, all by the Assad uh, regime in Russia. And through it all, we have been unwavering in, in our resilience. And so nothing will break our will. This war will not break our will. And for all of us, um, as long as we are alive, it's our obligation and responsibility to ourselves and our people to continue um, doing the work we're doing and to continue educating ourselves, improving ourselves to the world. And our cause is a just one. And we hope that the world can stand by us because our cause is a just one. And because we continue to survive and thrive um, and live up to our values and ideals despite this war. And that might be the biggest proof for the rest of the world to come to our aid and to help us is because we haven't given up and because nothing will break our will. The only thing that will break our will is if we are dead, when we, if we get killed. Thank you so much for that. And are there women in other countries with whom you feel a solidarity? <laughs> شفنا دعم يمكن أكثر شيء من قبل السوري للطوارئ اللي داعمين نساء مثلا اللي دخلوا معنا بجرسات دعم نفسي للأسف ما كان عنا وقت نشتغلون سواء من لبنان أو من أمريكا في جهات صراحة كتير نساء بيفتخروا أي بعمل المركز أو أي مركز ثاني عم يشتغل صالح المرأة مو بس النسويين أو هيك أي حدا متعاطف يمكن مع قضيتنا um, to be honest, the greatest amount of support um, and solidarity uh, of women that we have seen in felt has come through um, the Syrian Emergency Task Force, the women at the organization, but also the communities that have come and supported us um, from the United States. Um, we have had workshops with women um, from America and Lebanon through SETF, for example, helping us with trauma and, and emotional support. Um, and, and it goes beyond women. I mean, we have seen solidarity from uh, American communities um, with us uh, because they've seen um, our resilience and they like the fact that we're trying to keep sort of alive civil society organizations and, and to keep education going and, and to, to keep, uh, you know, moving ahead, uh, even under horrific circumstances. And, and so we're, we're very grateful for all of them. Thank you so much, Muaz and Rasha, for your time. That is all of the questions that I have. So Rasha, if you have any final comments that you would like to add, that would be great. أكيد الشكر لكم على هيك مقابلات وهيك لقاءات معكم. نتمنى إنه صراحة الوضع الحالي اللي عنا أو أي مجهود عم يصير ضمن المحرر السوري يوصل للعالم. كثير مهم بالنسبة إنه يعرف الغرب والمجتمع الدولي بشكل عام الصورة المعاكسة للصورة البروجة للنظام لواقعنا إنه نحن إرهابيين نحن دعاة حرب نحن ناس متخلفين ما عنا أي مجال للتطور. فهو مشان هيك عم بيجابه جهات إرهابية مجرمة لا اللي موجودين بالداخل السورة المحرر هنا ناس حابين يتطوروا حابين يعيشوا الشيء الوحيد اللي عم يعبرون عن النظام إنه هن طالبوا بحريتهم بس يعطيكم العافية um, the one thing that uh, first of all thank you all so much for having me on um, as a guest and I wanted to add that I hope that you can convey to the world um, and to everyone um, what we are um, and, and the facts on the ground in Syria. Uh, you know, we want, especially the West in the United States and Europe, to understand uh, who we really are, not the misinformation that the Assad regime and its allies put out about us, that we are terrorists and that we are backwards and that we want to destroy the country and that we're extremists. Uh, no, we are the Syrian people and we want to educate ourselves and better ourselves and better our country um, and be a part of the international community. And, all of, and that applies to all of the people in the liberated areas of Syria. 
the Assad regime continuously says that all of those in liberated areas are terrorists um, and extremists. And the fact is that we are people that um, demanded our rights. The only reason, reason he says that about us and the reason that he kills us and displaces us is because we ask for our freedom. And so we're going to stand by that and we just hope that the whole world knows who we really are. شكرا كثير لكم انا صراحه فخوره بهذا الكلام اكيد شهاده بعتز فيها ان شاء الله رسالتكم توصل لكل النساء واكيد مو مجرد كلام يعني فعل فعلا النساء عنا الحمد لله قادرين يقدموا قادرين يتطوروا شكرا كثير thank you very kind words uh, are a point of pride for me thank you for that and and your message will be received by all of our women beneficiaries but you know our entire community And I could tell you beyond just, you know, conveying words, we, we will continue to work even harder uh, and show with our actions, you know, to our community and to everyone how important this is. So thank you again for your time. Thank you so much, Rasha, for your time and contributions to our episode. Your work is empowering women to strive for independence and freedom. Thank you to Muaz Mustafa for translating. And if you would like to learn more about the Women's Dawn Center or about the Syrian Emergency Task Force, you can visit their website at syriantaskforce.org. Thank you, dear listener, for tuning into this episode. And we look forward to seeing you on our next episode of Global Connections, Syrian Hidden Voices. Until then, this is your host, Olivia Stevens, wishing you all the best. Thank you.